Hi, I'm Beth Wagner, physical therapist. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate nerve glides to release median nerve entrapment. First, I'll start with a brief overview of median nerve entrapment, including symptoms and common causes. Then I'll jump right into the nerve glides. First, the term entrapment refers to pinching or compression of the nerve somewhere along its pathway, resulting in irritation, inflammation, and other symptoms. The median nerve originates in the nerve roots of the cervical spine. It runs underneath the clavicle or the collarbone, down the inside of the arm, across the front of the elbow, down the forearm, and through the wrist at the carpal tunnel, and ends in the hand. The most common place of entrapment of the median nerve is the carpal tunnel, right at the wrist. There can be many causes of median nerve entrapment and carpal tunnel syndrome. Some of the most common include repetitive motion with the wrist bent, such as typing, and sleeping with the wrist bent, or with the fingers and palm curled in. Common symptoms include weakness in the hand and the fingers, specifically with flexion, as well as numbness, tingling, and pain in the front of the palm, the thumb, index, and middle finger. Among the many options of treatment for nerve entrapment or carpal tunnel syndrome, this video is specifically focused on nerve glide exercises, which help to release the pinched nerve and restore normal mobility of the nerve along its entire pathway. Nerves do not like to be stretched, and pulling on both ends of the nerve at the same time does not help to release a pinched nerve. Instead, nerves respond well to gliding or flossing, which is to move one end of the nerve at a time in order to mobilize the nerve through the area where it's pinched. The movements are performed gently with slow and smooth repetition. There is no hold involved. Mild discomfort and numbness and tingling are common with these movements. These sensations should dissipate within a couple minutes of completing the exercises. If you notice severe numbness and tingling while performing the exercises, then stop, shake it out, and rest. Try again after the sensations stop or return to their baseline. These movements should not be painful. If you experience severe pain, stop the exercise and rest. When you try again, be sure that you're performing the exercise correctly and you might need to start with slower movement in a smaller range of motion. For best results, do these exercises one to three times a day, depending on how well your body is tolerating the movement. You might start to notice decreased symptoms as soon as the first session or first few sessions, but lasting improvement typically requires consistent daily performance for six to eight weeks. These exercises can be done sitting or standing. I'll be demonstrating them sitting today. So first, let's start with a posture correction. Sitting in a supportive chair, be sure that your pelvis is in neutral alignment, so you're not tipped too far forward and you're not slouched back. From this midpoint, let's move up to your low back. Be sure that you have the normal curve in your lumbar spine. And now moving up farther, lift your chest and relax your shoulder blades down and back. Do a little bit of a chin tuck to pull your chin back so that your ears are centered over your shoulders. And finally, imagine a string coming out of the top of your head. Gently pull that string up to elongate your spine and maximize the space between each vertebra. And that will help you get the most out of these exercises. The first nerve glide will be flossing at the wrist. Starting with tall posture, lift your arm up to the side and be sure to keep your shoulder relaxed, down and back. Don't let that shoulder come up into your ear. Keep it down. Start with your palm facing forward, your thumb up toward the ceiling. Now bend your wrist back so that your, your palm is faced out to the wall next to you and your fingers and thumb are pointing behind you. And then relax your hand and repeat. Bend your wrist, fingers and thumb behind you, palm facing out toward the wall. Keep the shoulder relaxed and down. Pause and come back to the starting position. Only lift your arm out to the side as far as you feel comfortable. Anywhere between about hip height and shoulder height is great. You might try varying this position and see where you feel the best results. Continue relaxing your shoulder and bending your wrist so your fingers are pointed behind you, 
palm out to the wall next to you and come back to the starting position. Only hold the floss or the glide for less than a second. Just a pause and come back. Perform 10 repetitions or as many as you feel comfortable doing and then shake it out and rest that hand. In the next nerve glide, we'll add flossing at the elbow. Start with your elbow comfortably by your side, shoulders relaxed down and back, palm facing up. Reach forward, straightening your elbow and point your fingers down, palm facing forward. Pause and return to the starting position. Repeat, reach forward, straighten your elbow, point your fingers down toward the floor. Pause, make sure to keep your shoulder relaxed and down and come back to the starting position. And repeat, straighten the elbow, reach forward, fingers toward the floor. If you find your shoulder keeps popping up, add a little bit of pressure with the other hand, gently pressing down to keep your shoulder relaxed. Come back to the starting position. Straighten your arm, point toward the floor. Pause and come back to the starting position. Patterning your breathing with these movements can be very helpful for decreasing symptoms, helping to improve blood flow, circulation, and no normal neural movement. I suggest starting with an inhale to prepare for the movement in that rest position. Then as you initiate the nerve glide, exhale. So I would inhale in this rest position and then exhale, extend the arm out, point the fingers toward the floor, and then Inhale, come back to the starting position. Exhale, reach forward, point down. Pause, come back to the starting position. Try that pattern of exhaling with the nerve glide and inhaling back to the start position. If that breathing pace feels too rapid, you can also try taking one breath per complete movement. In other words, exhaling throughout the entire movement for one repetition and then inhaling the next repetition. And alternate exhaling and inhaling as you go through the nerve glide. Experiment with your breathing pattern. See what feels best for you. The most important thing is that you're not holding your breath and you're continuing to use the flow of breath to help with the flow of the nerve along its pathway. The last nerve glide will include flossing at the cervical spine with movement of your head and neck. Start with tall posture, shoulder blades relaxed, down and back. Bring your arm up to the side, as high or low as you feel comfortable. Keep your palm faced up. From the starting position, tip your head away from the arm that you're working on. I'll tip my head to the left, left ear coming down toward the left shoulder. Pause. Now as I lift my head back up to the starting position, I'm going to bend my wrist, fingers pointing down, palm toward the wall next to me. And as I relax my hand back up to the starting position, I'll tip my head to the left. Pause. And as my head comes up, fingers go toward the floor. And then reverse that. Hand relaxes and head tips to the left. Head comes up, fingers point toward the floor. Pause. And continue matching the head movement with the hand and the wrist movement with a slow, smooth pace. Do as many repetitions as you feel comfortable working up to 10 repetitions. So to floss the left arm, lift your left arm up to the side as far as you feel comfortable, palm facing the ceiling, shoulder relaxed. I'll tip my right ear toward my right shoulder, pause. As my head comes up, I'll bend my wrist, fingers toward the ground, pause. As my hand relaxes, my head tips to the right, come back up, fingers toward the floor. Continue with slow, smooth motion, tipping the head to the side and bending the fingers down toward the floor. After 10 repetitions, shake it out and relax your arm. And that wraps up the nerve glides for medial nerve entrapment and carpal tunnel syndrome. I hope you find these nerve glide or nerve flossing exercises helpful to decrease your symptoms and help you get back to doing your everyday activities to the best of your ability. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and give it a big thumbs up.
Also, there can be other points of compression or pinching along the pathway of the nerve, especially through the neck. If you're experiencing neck pain or other symptoms in your cervical spine, please check out my playlist of videos covering the cervical spine and other related topics. Check the description below for the links to those videos. If you have questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm able. Here's to your healing, health, and happiness. Have a fantastic day.